This is the M4 Mac Mini, and it's got its biggest redesign in years. It's now Apple's smallest Mac ever, smaller than some iPhones, and literally fits in the palm of my hand. At just one and a half pounds, it's half the size of the previous model and finally feels worthy of the Mini name. The base model packs a punch with a 10 core CPU, 10 core GPU, 16 gigabytes of unified memory, aka the RAM, and a 256 gigabyte SSD. Not bad for Apple's most affordable Mac. Port wise, it's solid. Up front, we got two 10 gigabit USB C ports and a headphone jack, and then around on the back, We've got three Thunderbolt 4 ports, HDMI, Ethernet, and power. And yes, the power button is now at the bottom of the Mac. It's a little awkward as you have to lift it just to turn it on and off, but it's really not that big of a deal. I've been carrying this little guy around for the past like two months now as both a portable workstation as well as a desktop. And I'm gonna share with you guys the full desk setup I created for the Mac Mini in an upcoming video. But in this video, I wanted to focus on the portable setup I created, but also just how this base model has been holding up. You might be wondering why I make the Mac Mini a portable setup in the first place. And honestly, it just comes down to the fact that I've seen so many others do the same thing on YouTube. So I've just been inspired to do it as well. But I also have the iPad Pro and that is like my laptop. It's my portable computer, if you will. But of course, because it's an iPad and has iPad OS, there are limitations and there's times where I do need Mac OS and a Mac. And for those times, I grabbed the Mac Mini in this portable setup. Since the Mac Mini is what Apple calls a BYOKDM system, bring your own keyboard display and mouse, the goal was to find portable versions of these essentials. Let's start with the display because this is where I went a little bit different and instead of going with a monitor or a portable monitor, I actually went with a pair of XR glasses from Vitcher and they're actually kind enough to sponsor this video and I've been using them for the past couple weeks and honestly, they are perfect for this kind of setup. These are the Vitcher Pro XR glasses and they work with everything from a Steam Deck, Nintendo Switch, a MacBook, and even a PlayStation either through USB-C or or with a dongle, essentially giving you a portable immersive screen experience wherever you are. Aesthetically, they look just like a regular pair of sunglasses. You can wear them without turning any heads, and that's pretty rare for a pair of XR glasses. They weigh just 77 grams, and they're light enough for long sessions, and yes, the top and the sides are a little chunky, but overall, they are super sleek. Inside, you're getting dual 1080p Sony micro OLED displays, one for each eye, and the visuals are razor sharp and extremely bright at 4,000 nits, and I typically leave this around 50%, even when I'm outdoors, because these things do get crazy bright. And once you fine tune the nose pads and the little dials up top, the clarity is edge to edge with no distortion. The virtual screen maxes out at 135 inches and it really does feel huge, especially once you find like the right angle and distance. It's way bigger than your typical TV and even projector. I'm honestly not exaggerating here. With a 120 hertz refresh rate, these glasses are great for gaming, but they're also shine with the Mac because you get a buttery smooth experience and the scaling works really well. The sharpness with OLED is great. And for something like this Mac mini setup, it's a near perfect display, crisp, responsive, and entirely portable. One of my favorite features is the electrochromatic film in the lenses. So with a single tap, the lenses darken and blocking up to 98% of ambient light, which is great if you need to focus, especially if you're in bright environments. And if someone walks up to you, you just like kind of like tap it again and the lens just clears up instantly. It's so seamless. Now let's talk about 3D because this is genuinely what surprised me. At first, real-time 2D to 3D sounded like a gimmick, but the immersive 3D experience from Vitcher is the real deal. It's AI powered, works in real time, and gives you cinema level depth on any video, old home footage, YouTube, even Netflix movies. No special cameras or 3D specific video, the AI analyzes every frame and adds real depth. Just download the app and connect to your Vitcher Pro XR glasses and you're good to go. If you're looking for a portable, high quality display for productivity, entertainment, or gaming, these are some of the best XR glasses I've ever tested. 135 inch display 120 hertz refresh rate oled they just look phenomenal i love pairing them with my mac setup if you're interested in checking them out there is a link in the description below and a huge thanks to vitcher for sponsoring this video when it came to picking a keyboard and a mouse it was actually a lot trickier than i expected because i unplug and plug in the mac mini constantly and i needed peripherals that were going to connect to the mac mini right away the issue is even if your keyboard and mouse are like supported in mac os sometimes bluetooth can be a hit or a miss like when you initially boot up your Mac, sometimes it takes a long time for Bluetooth connect, if not at all. Like there's been times where I have to actually log into the Mac for Bluetooth to actually kind of turn on. And there's only two real ways I've been able to kind of solve this issue. And that's either go with a first party accessory. So something from Apple, because obviously in Apple fashion, it just works or go with a peripheral that has a 2.4 gigahertz wireless receiver. So what I ended up doing was kind of like mixing and matching in a way. So for the keyboard, I went with the Apple Magic Keyboard. It's compact, it's super lightweight, and most importantly, it connects immediately with zero fuss. You get that familiar Mac typing experience, full shortcut support, and everything just kind of works right out of the box. Plus it's slim enough to fit in my backpack or even the small camera bag I'm using for this setup. 
For the mouse, I consider going full Apple with the Magic Trackpad, and I actually do have one paired to the Mini, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. But for everyday use, I much prefer a mouse, especially for long working sessions. I tested a few travel size mice, but in the end of the day, I ditched the whole ultra compact idea and brought back a classic, which was the Logitech MX Master 3. I've paired it to the Mac Mini via the 2.4 gigahertz receiver, and I plugged that into a USB-C dongle that I've just had forever. If I have a link to it, I'll find it put it in the description if you guys want to check this one out. But yeah, just like the Magic Keyboard, it connects immediately on boot, no pairing delays, and just no weird hiccups. Now here's something that a lot of people overlooked about this new Mac Mini, and that was the power cord. Thankfully, Apple didn't change it from previous generations. So if you have an older Mac Mini, you can actually just use the same power cord, or actually even better yet, if you have an Apple TV, you can actually use that power cord with the Mac Mini. Personally, I have a few of those lying around, so I just put them in places where I typically bring my Mac Mini, so like my dining room table, when I wanna like switch up my like office type space, obviously I have one here in the office, but I also have one in my backpack when I wanna travel. So like when I'm traveling, I never have to remember, oh, did I grab the Mac Mini like power cord? I just have an older Apple TV one in the bag and it's just instantly ready to go. Now, realistically, this kind of is like the full setup, but because this is a Mac and internal storage is extremely expensive, I always make sure to pair an external SSD to my Mac setup. And this Mac mini is no different because it does only have 256 gigs of internal storage. That is a little bit like limiting, but for what I really use it for, it's actually not that bad. But if I do need to work on like a creative project or work on some larger files, I always make sure to have this the one with me. This is a Ugreen Thunderbolt enclosure with a Samsung 990 Pro on the inside. It's four terabytes. You don't need four terabytes. I actually got this on sale for the same price as the two terabytes. So big win for me, but yeah, get a Thunderbolt enclosure with an SSD. It's probably the best external storage solution that you can get. Now, a lot of people ask how I actually use external SSD storage with my Mac. So I thought I'd kind of show you guys and run it down real quick. Once I format my drive into APFS, which is like the optimized format for Mac OS, I organize it into four folders that mirror my workflow. I got YouTube, social archive, and admin. And inside each of these, I break things down even more. Like in the YouTube folder, for example, I have subfolders for like my A roll, my B roll, thumbnails, audio, et cetera. Then I drag the main folders into the finder sidebar. So Everything is just one click away. This is kind of like the key thing when working off an external drive is having your finder sidebar just mimic your drive. So like putting all those folders in there, hiding all the rest so that you're only going into the external drive. All right, let's talk about how I've actually been using this M4 Mac mini and what you can kind of expect out of the baseline spec. When I first ran my benchmarks, I had to do like a retest because I didn't believe my first scores. Like in Geekbench 6, I got a single core score of 3,856 and a multi-core score of 14,950. That single core score is actually better than my M2 Ultra Mac Studio score. And that is so crazy for just like the affordability of this machine as well as just the size. And I mean, granted, like the Mac Studio is in a world of its own. It's got a better GPU got more cores, got a better media engine, neural engine, and RAM and memory bandwidth and all, basically everything else is better on the M2 Ultra, but the fact that this beat it in a test clearly shows that the M4 can hold its own. Compared to the M2 Pro MacBook Pro I reviewed a few years back, this thing is about, I'd say 50 to 60% faster than that machine, which is just so wild. But benchmark numbers only tell a certain story. So let's talk about real world performance. To really stress test it the best way that I could, I just ported my whole creative workflow over to this thing and it honestly held up really well. Importing large files from an SD card was pretty much instant. Previewing 4K video or high res photos was smooth and lag free and finder and duplicating large assets was quick and seamless. I edited photos from my recent desk setup video using Photometer and did the final touches in Pixelmator Pro and had multiple apps running in the background the whole time and file transfers were fast, edits felt responsive and the exports were solid. The system never felt like it was really under any pressure. Now when it comes to video editing, that's where you start to notice its limits though not immediately because that built-in media engine helps a lot. For basic editing, trimming clips, color correction, and cleaning up audio, it performed great. It even felt similar to my M4 MacBook Air, which had 24 gigs of RAM on the inside. Where the gap really widens is during exports or any sort of rendering. Like the M2 Ultra would handle these kinds of things in like seconds, whereas the M4 Mini takes a lot longer, but that's kind of expected. What's really interesting though, is that I didn't really experience these GPU slowdowns when it came to gaming. Now I'm not someone who's gonna expect like crazy 4K Ultra high-end graphics and crazy refresh rates like it's it's a Mac it's not meant for gaming but I did play my favorites from Apple Arcade like Oceanhorn 2, Samurai Jack as well as Lego Star Wars Castaways and it was pretty smooth and fluid I didn't really have any complaints I even played Resident Evil 3 at 1080p at 60 Hertz again no real complaints a few slowdowns here and there the fan did kick on a little bit but other than that it was a pretty smooth experience now would I still rather game on a PlayStation 5 
easily all day, every day. But if I run into a situation where I only have this Mac Mini and I want to play a game, I'm not going to complain. For everyday tasks, though, it gets even better. Multitasking in Safari, switching between apps, using productivity tools, it all feels so snappy. I've used M1, M2, and even M3, and you actually do notice that speed improvement on this M4. Most of the time, I'm just doing emails, searching the web, business admin type of stuff, research, and that 16 gigs of RAM in here handles it all pretty well. And even when it comes to like web-based tools, like I use Canva a lot on Safari, and I did notice a pretty big speed improvement, like zooming in and out of stuff, importing my photos into Canva, going like moving all like elements and stuff around. It was all extremely fast and really, really quick. I even wrote the script for this video using IA Writer, had like 15 to 20 Safari tabs open in the background, as well as messing with like AI, so ChatGPT, as well as Apple Intelligence, and there was like zero hiccups. But when it comes to this M4 base Mac mini, it hasn't just been all about work or creativity. I've actually had some pretty cool use cases for it. One of, if not my favorite ways to use the Mac mini is actually as a stream box. Because it has HDMI 2.1, you get full resolution as well as full refresh rate support. And they're also being ethernet built in, means that you can just like plug it into your internet and get your full high quality streams just so easy. No dongles, no hubs. It's just literally plug and play. This thing's barely any bigger than an Apple TV. So it's so easy to hide in like an entertainment setup. And I have hooked up to my LG 65 inch C1 OLED and I just play everything off of it from Disney to YouTube to Netflix to all my live sports and everything looks great. Mac OS scales perfectly. I got that full 120 hertz refresh rate. It's just such a great experience. And this is where I actually mentioned earlier the magic trackpad comes into play here because it's so easy to sit on the couch and use the trackpad because not only can you like hold it but you can just so easily scroll click a show, click a movie, click your like live stream for your sports or whatever you want to watch. Like it's so easy to use. It's basically like using a remote. That's just, I love the trackpad for that. Outside of entertainment, I use this machine as sort of like a go-to test bench. So I like to try out a lot of new apps. I just use the Mac mini for that. If you guys want app recommendations, head over to my socials. That's where I share a bunch of them. So Instagram or TikTok, we're both just follow me on both. Uh, but yeah, I test all the new apps through the Mac mini. And what's nice about the Mac mini is that it only has 256 gigs of storage. So if I don't like an app, I just uninstall it. I just delete it. So the ones I like, I keep it, talk about it, share it, whatever. If I don't like it, I just delete it. And that kind of helps me stay organized and like helps me remember what apps I actually like to use. It's also perfect for just testing accessories. So if I ever get like a new display, a keyboard, mouse, or audio equipment, speakers, headphones, and everything, I just go through this first. It's just so like small and compact. So it just makes it so versatile. So here's the bottom line. The M4 Mac mini punches way above its weight. It's not perfect, especially for GPU intensive things, but I feel like for most people, this thing can handle basically everything you need to, and you don't even need to think about pro or max chips. I think what just really stands out to me as a whole is just how far we've come in Apple Silicon. This feels like the first generational leap since the M1 and like I mean, the fact that this thing like can like beat out an M2 Pro and it's only been a couple years and actually get close to the M2 Ultra in certain use cases is just so wild. With 16 gigs of RAM and that starting price being at $699 Canadian or $599 with a student discount, again, use the student discount, Apple never checks. This has to be one of the most compelling Macs that you can buy right now. All right, that's going to wrap it up. If you guys want more M4 Mac mini content, make sure to stay locked to the channel because I do have that full desk setup tour coming very, very soon. And if you guys like this video, make sure to give it a like and share it to a friend. And if you like Apple tech or desk setup related content, make sure to subscribe and I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace.